Okay, so here's the video um, that's going to go with the nature of light. Light is a wave. It's only going to do about the first eight slides. And I'm also, if I have time, I'm going to add on the working of problem number eight from your homework sheet. So if you have that homework sheet, you should. Um, you can go ahead and get that out and get it ready to go. And um, if not, if I don't have time on the end of this video, I'll put it on to another one. All right, I'm trying to go to where do I get to? There we go. Okay, very good. So this is how we know that light is a wave. That's really the whole point of this entire um, PowerPoint. So there's all the different topics that are covered. And, and this time for uh, tonight's video, or the video you're watching now, is really going to be about dispersion, a little bit about the introduction to light and some review stuff. But all of this other stuff we'll leave to another time. So first of all, what is light? I want to remind you that light is any part of that electromagnetic spectrum. So that entire, um, if you think about that spectrum, which you guys know that you hate to, hate to have to memorize, but anything from radio down to gamma is all considered light. And it's all part of that spectrum. And uh, the visible light's only the little part in the middle. So this is stuff that we've been through before. So I'm not gonna belabor the point. Within the visible light, there are the colors that go from red to violet and all the various colors in the middle red being on the radio end of the spectrum and violet being on the gamma spec end of the spectrum. Everything on this entire spectrum is an electromagnetic wave. It does not need a medium. That's by definition. So no medium needed to travel. So that's important to know. It can travel through a medium, but it doesn't have to. And it actually travels best if it's not traveling through a medium. It travels fastest. Everything on this spectrum travels at the speed of light, 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second, when it's moving in a vacuum. If you put the stuff on this medium in a, on this spectrum in various materials, like if you run it through glass or water, it won't travel at the speed of light anymore. It'll travel something slower, depending on what the material is that you're putting it into. So the other thing I need you to know is that the light itself, what it's made up of, is a combination of electric fields and magnetic fields that are vibrating. So the B, which is on this particular drawing is drawn as the blue, is magnetic field. That's the symbol we use for magnetic field. And the E is electric field, and that's going to be the pink on this drawing. So I have magnetic fields and electric fields. And these two um, types of fields are vibrating. So the magnetic field is vibrating, in this case, in the Z plane or the ZX plane, you know, in that direction. And the electric field is vibrating up and down, so in the XY plane, right? So they're vibrating perpendicular to each other. So that's important to know. And then the wave itself is actually traveling in the third direction, which in this case would be the X direction. So you have three different directions. You have the X, the Y, and the Z depending on um, you know, what's going on, you know, what direction it is. But the, the B will be in one plane, the, the electric field will be in another, and the wave itself will travel in the third. Um, the things that you need to know also are that the wavelength is the distance for one entire wave to happen, which we know. And that's what changes from radio to, free, to you know, infrared to microwave, visible, blah, blah, blah. You go through all that various part of the spectrum, the only thing that changes is the, the wavelength and therefore the frequency. But all those waves are all made up of this stuff. So when a light wave hits your eye, um, it's actually, this is what's hitting your eye. Magnetic and electric fields that are vibrating. That's what's hitting your eye. And uh, your eye is des designed to see that of a certain, when it's a certain frequency, your, design, your eye is designed to see that. Okay? All right. So, so one of the funny things about light funny, not funny haha, -ha, but funny weird, um, is that it behaves both as a wave and a particle. And so um, the crazy thing about that is that sometimes it'll behave as a wave if you want it to. So it'll have wave-like properties. It'll do what you want it to as a, as a wave. And other times, if you want it to be a particle and you want it to bump other things out of the way, you want it to bump electrons out of the way, it'll do that too. But it won't do them at the same time. So that's the crazy thing. If you run an experiment where you need light to be both a wave and a particle right at the same time, it won't work. It can behave as a wave or it can behave as a particle, but not both at the exact same time. So a particle of light we call a photon. And we tend to draw photons as little packets of light. And we draw a little wave function on the inside. So that's kind of how we draw them. So that's what this guy here is representing. So it's a, par it's a packet of light that's also a wave. It's a little bit weird. Um, to think about, but we're going to 
discuss in this PowerPoint how it is that light is a wave and how do we know it's a wave. So there's several things that tell us that light is a wave. Um, one thing is that it refracts. It changes its direction from, as it goes from one material to another. A particle would not do this. A particle would have no reason to change its direction as it goes from one material to another. But a wave would because its wavelength changes and its speed changes. Um, another one is it has a wavelength and a frequency. So those are things that waves have. So therefore it must be a wave. It also interferes with itself. Particles can't interfere with themselves. You put a particle, two particles in the same place in the same time, they're just going to bump each other out of the way. They're not going to interfere. Waves can exist in the same place in the same time. So we know that light must be a wave because we see it interfere with itself. It bends around barriers. That's another thing that a particle won't do. A particle won't care that there's a barrier. It'll just keep going or it, you know, bounce off, whatever. But waves can actually bend when they go around barriers. That's called diffracting. And um, it also is broken up into different colors in a prism. Again, a particle wouldn't break up into different pieces if it went through a prism, if it could even get through a prism. Um, but a wave would. So that's how we know that light um, act can, can act as a wave. And the last little bit, I'll just wait a second. OK. The last little bit is that light can be polarized. And that's something we learned about last year, polarizing. But you couldn't do that with a particle. So these are all things that let us know that light behaves as a wave. All right, um, a couple of things to review. First of all, there's this formula. It's a wave formula. Speed is frequency times wavelength. That's a, f that's a formula we know very well. We're going to substitute, instead of any old speed, we're going to be able to use the speed of light as long as we're talking about air or a vacuum. There's also the other formula I don't want you to forget about. Speed is distance over time. That's another formula that's, that's kind of more generic for anything moving at a constant speed. And that's another one that you're going to be able to use. So when you're looking at your homework for tonight, you can see that um, pretty much questions one through five um, are more or less asking you uh, to use these formulas, just to apply them, kind of simple applications of this. Okay. There's a new formula you haven't seen before. It's how you calculate the energy of a wave. And it, this is the formula for figuring out the energy of the wave. It's the energy is equal to Planck's constant times frequency. Now here is Planck's constant. This is the value for Planck's constant. This constant is given in units called joules times a second. So if we work this out, we see that Planck's constant is in joules seconds. Frequency is in hertz, but a hertz is a one over second. So those seconds are going to cancel, and you're going to end up with an energy that's in joules. So that's how that's going to end up working. Later on, in the next few days or few weeks, we're going to see a different version of Planck's constant. It's going to be a different number, and it's going to be in a unit called an electron volt second. And what that's going to do for you is it's going to get you your energy is going to be in electron volts, which is a different unit for energy. And we'll get to that eventually. But for right now, you can just use this, form, this, this version of Planck's constant this value and your energy unit is going to be in joules. There's one other formula I want to give you and it's not on the PowerPoint so I'm going to need you to write it down. It's figuring out the momentum of the light. We used to use the formula P equals M times V for momentum and that's still going to work for large objects that have a mass but light doesn't have a mass so you can't use this formula. It definitely has a momentum though we can have light do crazy things like bump other particles out of the way. So it definitely has a momentum, but we're not going to be able to use m times v to calculate it. Instead, we're going to use its wavelength, and we're going to use the formula h, which is Planck's constant, over the wavelength. So that's another formula um, that, that's going to allow us to calculate momentum. The units are going to be that the momentum is kilogram meter per second. The Planck's constant is going to have to be in joules seconds, and the wavelength is going to be in meters. And we can work that out over here because a joule times a second over a meter, a joule is equal to a newton meter. So this is a newton meter times a second over a meter, right? The meters cancel. So a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared. That's what a newton is equal to. So this is a kilogram meter per second squared times a second. The seconds cancel, and I have just regular kilogram meter per second left over. So that's how that's going to end up working. So there's the formula for the momentum of a photon or a, a particle of light. So if they ask for that or if you ever see that, that's the formula you need to use. Okay. 
So this is just a problem that has worked out for you. Very simple problem about you know using the formula for v equals f times lambda. You have um, the white light that's traveling in a vacuum and then it goes into a prism and they want to know what's the speed of light in the prism. So the first part of that is that you use um, the index of refraction of the prism to figure out the speed of light in the prism. So that's what I've done right here. And then the second part, they want to know the wavelength in the prism. In order to do that, you need um, not only the speed in the prism, but you need the frequency in the prism. But you don't know that. But I, we did say already, prior to this, we've said it several times, that the frequency is only dependent on the source. So it's not going to change as the light goes from vacuum into prism. So if you can figure out the frequency out in the vacuum, then you can figure out the frequency in the prism because they're going to be the same. So that's what I did here is I figured out the frequency in the vacuum first, and then I knew that that frequency doesn't change. So then I can use the V equals F um, times lambda formula to figure out what the wavelength is because I'm going to use the speed that's in the prism. I'm going to use the frequency of the light, which never changes, and I that way I can solve the wavelength. Okay? All right, the last little bit is um, the dispersion of light. Dispersion is a word that we means that means the spreading, the spreading of light into its different colors. Okay? When you disperse something, you spread it outward. You send it out. So the spreading of light into colors. And this happens with a prism. And the reason it's able to happen is that you send in white light, but each one of these wavelengths from the reds, these are like the reds down here, and up here, these are like the violets. Each of these wavelengths has a different index of refraction. So a slightly different index of refraction, which means it's going to bend slightly differently. So the reds, they have a lower index of refraction, and this is a general rule of thumb. The reds' index of refraction is lower, so they're not going to bend as much. So when they're going through, the red lights are not going to bend, they're not going to have such a dramatic bend. The blue lights and the violet lights, the higher ones, those have a higher index. And so you're going to get more bending of light. Um, so that's why you're going to see. So what you end up seeing, if you're over here looking, is you see a rainbow of light. And it's all separated by its color because each of those colors has a different index of refraction. So that is um, the general idea. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and work a problem from your homework. So I need you to pull that out. The, the problem I'm going to work is problem number eight, and there's actually a diagram missing, so I'm going to need you to draw this diagram for you for the problem number eight. Problem number eight is um, about a glass prism, and it says there's a glass prism shown below, but I didn't show it, so I'm going to draw it for you now so that you can see um, what this looks like. It's actually a prism that's in the form of a 30-60-90 triangle, so I'll let you draw that. This is the 90-degree angle. Here is your 60 down here, and there's your 30. And there's two um, types of light going in. There's a red light and a blue light that are getting sent in, I think. Let's just double check. Yep, okay. So light is being sent straight in on this side. So this is some sort of combined, they're calling it white light, but it's a, it's a combination of the colors. And then they're giving you some information. They're saying that the red light which has a um, wavelength of 700 nanometers, has an index of refraction of 1.5, and the blue light, which has a wavelength of um, 480 nanometers, has an index of refraction of 1.6. So the first thing you're supposed to do is find the speed of the blue light in the glass. So you can do that, part A by using n is c over v. So you just do 1.6 equals 3 times 10 to the 8th, and then divided by the speed in the glass, and you can figure that out. So it's going to be 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 1.6. Hold on a second, hon. Uh, no, that's okay. I'm going to, um, okay. So um, you're going to do 3 times 10 to the 8th, divided by the 1.6, and that's going to get you 1.875 times 10 to the 8th. So I'll write that down. And that's the speed of light in the actual um, 
the speed of the blue light inside the glass. So that's part A. Part B wants to know the frequency of the red light in the glass. So that's going to be, um, the way you would do that is you'd have to know 